Hi friends, in this video we're going to talk about 21 phrases you can use to immediately improve your speaking on the Duolingo English test. Now these phrases are helpful because they'll help you sound a lot more natural, make your answers sound more logical, and help you speak for longer. And we will start in just one second, but if you're new here, hi, I'm teacher Luke from detready.com. Visit our website to find useful tools and information to help you prepare for the Duolingo English test. Okay then, well let's get started with today's lesson. I'm going to teach you these phrases by going through an answer for one of the speaking questions on the practice Duolingo English test, and this is the question we'll look at today. Discuss public assistance offered to low-income families in your country. What kind of assistance is offered? Who can benefit? What are some of the positive and negative results of these programs? So this is the question we're going to answer. When you get a question like this on the Duolingo English test, it's good to begin your talk by using an introductory phrase. Basically, a phrase that will introduce the topic. These are a great way to begin your talk because they make you sound a lot more logical and they give you a couple more seconds to think about your ideas. Let me show you some of these introductory phrases. You can use phrases like this. Today, I'd like to talk about. In this talk, I'm going to describe, explain. I would like to talk about. I'm going to tell you about. All of these types of phrases are called introductory phrases and they're great for introducing the topic. So here's an example in full. Today, I'd like to talk about the different types of housing assistance low-income families get in my country. Another example. In this talk, I'm going to describe the different types of housing assistance low-income families get in my country. So as you can see, using an introductory phrase like this can help you sound a lot more logical and it's a great way to begin your answers. Now let's take a look back at the question we're answering today. You might notice that there are actually three different questions Duolingo asks you. This is very common on the read then speak question type on the test. And I strongly recommend that you answer each of these questions because it'll give you more things to talk about and help you speak for longer. But it is important how you transition from question to question. There are different phrases you can use to move from first to second to third. So let me show you some of those phrases here. For example, in regard to the first question, turning to the second question, or as for the final question. So you can use these three phrases to move from the first, second, and third questions. And I think they're a great way to transition. It also means that you don't have to link the ideas together to go from question to question. You can kind of begin a new idea by using one of these phrases. On top of that, if you want to go back to a question, if you have time or you have new ideas, you can use a phrase like this. Returning to the first question or returning to the second question. Now let me show you a full example. In regard to the first question, low-income families are entitled to several types of housing assistance, but the most common, I believe, is rental assistance, where families can receive a grant to help pay their rent. As for the final question, I strongly believe that support for low-income families is essential, especially for families with children. Returning to the second question, I would like to add that low-income families are not the only ones who can receive government support but also the elderly and people with disabilities can receive similar assistance. These types of transitional phrases from question to question are a great way to make your answers sound a lot more logical and it makes it easier for you to move to another question. Personally, I recommend you use these when you do the speaking question on the Duolingo test. Also, on the Duolingo speaking questions, you are required to give your opinion from time to time. And there are lots of different phrases you can use to give your opinion. Of course, the most common one is, in my opinion, but you don't want to use that one all the time. You can use some different ones. So let's look at some different ways to express your opinions now. You could say something like, I'm inclined to believe that, from my point of view, or from my perspective, my impression is that, as far as I'm concerned, the way I see it, so these are five different phrases you can use instead of in my opinion, and they're probably better. You'll probably get a higher score if you use one of these phrases on any English exam. Of course, in my opinion is not wrong. You just don't want to use it all the time. Now I'll show you a few quick examples on how you can use these phrases in your answers. So here's a full example. I'm inclined to believe that housing assistance is essential for many low-income families, especially families with young children. Another example, as far as I'm concerned, housing assistance is vital for many struggling families. 
And a third example, the way I see it, housing assistance is an important benefit for families who are struggling economically. Being able to give your opinion effectively on the Duolingo test is really important and these phrases can help you a lot. Now next up, after you've given your opinion, you want to back it up with some examples. And nearly all the students I teach use the same phrase to show that they're going to give an example. Of course, they say, for example. But there are lots of different ones you can use. And the more variety of phrases you use in your answer will lead to a better score. So let me show you some different phrases you can use to give examples here. For instance, a great example of this is, let me share an example. An instance from my life that springs to mind is, Given examples like this is a great way to develop your answer and that's really important too. And like I said earlier, it's a good idea not to use the same phrase over and over again. So don't just use the phrase, for example, many times, instead use these. Let's see how they can be used in a full sentence. For instance, families who are eligible for housing assistance can receive monthly grants to help pay for their rent as well as food stamps to cover their cost of groceries. And if you want to give a personal example, an example from your experience, you could say something like this. An instance from my life that springs to mind is when my best friend's mother and father both lost their jobs and they had to rely on government benefits for a short time to afford their groceries and pay their energy bills. It's very important to remember that when you do the speaking question on the Duolingo test that you have to develop your ideas. That means go beyond just giving your opinion, but giving a reason or an example why. Using phrases like the ones I just showed you are a great way to give examples. Okay, now we've spoken a lot about this question, it's time to conclude our answer. Many of my students use phrases like in conclusion or to sum up to conclude their answer, which is totally fine. But as always, I want to show you more variety of different phrases you can use. So here are some more phrases you can use to conclude your answer. You can say something like, to wrap this talk up, to summarize my opinion quickly, so that's why, to make a long story short. I don't recommend you use these phrases for writing, they are a bit informal for that, but they are totally fine for any type of speaking. By nature, speaking is a lot more informal, so phrases like this are totally fine. Let's see some examples of them. To wrap up this talk, Although some people argue that my government are too generous with the assistance they offer to low-income families, I believe it's essential that they continue offering this type of support. Okay, that's it. Those were 21 phrases you can use. Now I recommend you watch this speaking video next. It will help you to organize your answer. Okay, see you there.